Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you as I offer a few words this morning to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Sometime in the late 1800s, I don't really know uh, the precise date, uh, a banjo player, Bill Johnson, wrote these words. Nicodemus came a-running hard, said, Has anybody here done seen the Lord? I want to buy some religion, but what will it cost to get myself into heaven? For my soul be lost. Then my God spoke, and he spoke so sweet, sounded like the shuffle of angels' feet. He said, Marvel, thou man, if you want to be wise, you got to believe and be baptized. God told Nicodemus, God, oh yes, he did. He told Nicodemus, a man, he must be born again. I love that song. And it's just so, so true, <laughs> so directly to the point in this long lesson about Nicodemus. Now, I'll tell you, uh, most of us, as we've preached these uh, lessons, especially about Nicodemus, typically we take some cheap shots at, at Nicodemus. And uh, he ends up being the kind of villain of the story, sneaking around in the night and all this business. You know, I've decided after reading it this week, uh, Nicodemus is just like all of us, <laughs> actually. And he comes at night, but, you know, as I thought about it, what questions don't come to us at night, right? Like, that's when all the questions come, when you're sitting around and things get silent and quiet. Uh, that, that darkness settles in and the questions begin to swirl around you. They, questions come when things get tough. Questions come when the world quiets uh, and you uh, seem to be the spectacle of it all. Uh, it come, they come at the side of hospital beds and at visitations, at, at births of babies, big moments. They come all the time, but most of all, they are swimming up there. And when I quiet down, they sneak in. And I really think Nicodemus has heard a little bit about this Jesus fella. He's a teacher. He knows a lot about the scripture. And he just has some questions. And who wouldn't right now just love to sit at Jesus' feet and pepper him with about 10,000 questions? Just all kinds of stuff. We just like to know. Unfortunately, Jesus is not in the giving out answer category of, of folks, I don't think. And he plays with Nicodemus a little bit as he says, you know, what does it mean to be born again or born anew? You know, born again has a lot of stuff in our culture. Born anew may be a little bit better way of thinking this. You know, how, do we, how are we revived, if you will? How do we have a new sense of things? How do we have a new spirit of things? Uh, and clearly, I think, because, because Nicodemus comes in the middle of the night with this question, I think this must be stuff that Jesus had been talking about. It certainly uh, would seem so. Um, and I would suggest, you know, we all, we all kind of desire that. Uh, uh, I mean, that's kind of why we're here. Uh, it, after COVID and the divisions and everything we've been through over the last year, you know, you all are you all pretty tough. Uh, and here you are on Sunday morning, kind of hoping maybe you'll get a little something, you know, a little, maybe a little answer to that question. Maybe you'll get a little renewal for the rest of the week. Um, and what we're told essentially is that God's Spirit renews us, uh, and that it's not so much that uh, there is this physical change, but rather we open ourselves up to the moving of God's Spirit. And God's Spirit, who is there all the time, is able to be in conversation uh, with us. We open ourselves up to the workings of the Spirit. And part of what Jesus says is this is actually not a, a Jesus thing. 
a lot of us think about the Spirit kind of be owned, uh, being owned by the New Testament, but even uh, Jesus quotes other passages. I was thinking of the passage from uh, uh, Ezekiel where he says, I'm going to remove your stone heart of flesh and give you a new spirit, a new spirit within you that will help you to live a different kind of life in the world. So this working of, of the Spirit in us is something that we have sought for ages. If Ezekiel is talking about it way back then, then, you know, people, this is a hunger that people have. Augustine used to say that we're actually made with that piece missing so that we would long for, yearn for God. And so the fact that we've been looking for this all this time, of course, we think, too, as Christians of the image, not just of the fire and the flame on Pentecost Sunday, but we think of the waters of baptism, don't we? Jesus brings that up in, in this passage. And so, you know, that's the basic way in which all Christians are recognized as Christians through the waters of baptism. Even though today we're doing confirmation, that's really just me coming to, to say welcome officially to the church and do what people have been doing for ever since the New Testament was written, which is to go around and pray for people and put their hands on their head and say, the Spirit's begun some good work in you. May the Spirit continue to do so. And, and, and that's something that's been with us forever. Now, the thing is here that uh, I would suggest that it is a little harder, uh, if you will, to uh, say we want to be changed than to be changed. And we might say, okay, well, was Nicodemus changed, right? That'd be a good question for us to start out with. But yes, we know that at the end, Nicodemus was one of the few people with Jesus at his crucifixion. He was there and demanded the body be taken down along with a few other disciples. Uh, but most had fled at that point. And Nicodemus is faithfully there with his friend Jesus in his very last moments and ensures that he receives a good, a good burial. So we know that his relationship was changed, but, you know, the, the, the thing is, for all of us, for all of us, the work that begins tomorrow morning is just plain hard <laughs> uh, as we kind of navigate the world around us. There are going to be a lot of pressures and other things to do, and our lists are long, and we forget. Sometimes just spending a little quiet time with our Lord is a good thing, opening ourselves up to invite God to speak with us or us to speak with God. And some of that is I think we're a little nervous about it. I mean, after all, it is the Most High God that we are speaking to, right? But I think we, we sometimes believe that somehow... God can't handle all our questions. Or that God hasn't heard all those questions before that somehow we've come up with a unique one. Right? No. God longs for the conversation. I mean, tell me, show me a place where Jesus turns anybody away from a talk. Right? He doesn't. And I think that's the image that we're given here is that even in the dark of the night, time probably way past my bedtime, here comes Nicodemus and Jesus, and they sin, and they spend all hours of the night talking, I imagine. And that's, I think, what I want you all to walk away with, is the sense that God is big enough to hear our questions. God is big enough to hold our unbelief. God is big enough for us to be angry at God, even to raise our fists at God. And that that God loves us no matter what. And through kindness, even in the darkest night of Nicodemus' soul with all his questions, he helps him. He doesn't give him a quick epitaph or a Hallmark greeting card uh, statement, but rather what we're told is he gives him some things to think about. And I guess that's what we want to take away today, is that no matter what question we have, no matter whether we're happy in giving thanks to God as we might today for Sarah's confirmation, right? Or things are really hard. God is big enough to do that work with us, to sit and listen in the good times and in the bad, and maybe in the busy times too. Maybe in the busy times.
And so this week, as we continue our Lenten disciplines, as we think about restoring our relationship with God and through Jesus Christ and invite the Holy Spirit to be a part of our lives, maybe, maybe this week we could take a few minutes before bed, when you get up, sitting there with your cup of coffee. I don't care if it's in the car while you're at a stoplight. Though here in Eagle Lake, you'd have to be pretty fast. <laughs> but take a few minutes. Lay the question out there. And then listen. And then listen. Sometimes the words are hard, which is, you know what you need to do. Most often than not, it's more like what he offers the disciples and their greatest moment of fear. Peace be with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop, and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you. Thank you.